is a demanding sport that requires the practitioner to find a harmony between their own physicality and the variety of disciplines at their disposal. Boxing in particular is a fundamental for numerous champions, as well as being the most utilized method of striking in the sport. In today's list, we will be counting down the UFC's top 10 boxers, with particular focus on the effectiveness at the highest level, boxing IQ, and consistency. Starting us off is number 10, Alexander Gustafson. Lawler and McDonald, Maynard and Edgar, Figueredo and Moreno, John Jones and number 10 on our list, Alexander Gustafson. These names will forever stand side by side in the annals of MMA as some of the greatest fights ever. Jones vs. Gustafson won as arguably the greatest of them all. Gustafson began his boxing training at 10 years old, winning a youth championship at 16. He competed as a boxer in 2008-2009, as well as winning an amateur tournament. He would also beat the Swedish heavyweight champion. Before his boxing career gained traction, he signed with the UFC in September of 2009. Displaying crisp boxing skills in his highlight reel, the Mahler notched finish after finish on his record in pursuit of UFC gold. Fun fact. At 6'4 with a 79 inch reach, it's safe to say Gustafson is a formidable boxer. If his boxing is good enough for the UFC Hall of Fame, it's good enough for this list. Oh, oh, he's oh, shot. Trying to finish it here. Oh my. It's it. And it's it is it. all over. It's it. Just like that. Number nine, Cody Garbrandt. Holding an amateur boxing record of 32 and one, our number nine is a prolific finisher with style and panache. Of his 12 UFC wins, 10 are knockouts. After six fights and five knockouts, Cody fought Dominic Cruz for the UFC bantamweight title in December 2016 at UFC 207. Sticking and moving, slipping and countering, at times literally dancing in front of the most dangerous bantamweight of that era. No love kept Cruz at bay or closed the distance, seemingly at will. Easily drawing blood with sharp jabs and check hooks, to know what Cody Garbrandt is about, look no further than his viral KO of Rafael Asuncao. Oh, that goes Mendez! That will do it! Cody Garbrandt by knockout! Our next addition is guaranteed to surprise you with some remarkable facts, truly one of a kind. It's number eight. Holly Holm. Holmes' defining moment in the organization was back in 2015 at UFC 193, when she dethroned the iconic Ronda Rousey claiming the women's bantamweight title in spectacular fashion. Holly's precision with her straight punches consistently split the guard and found the openings. Inevitably, Rousey faltered, allowing Holly to land the lead roundhouse head kick, which closed the show. The Preacher's daughter boasts 18 title defenses across three weight classes as a boxer, being recognized by BoxRec as the greatest female boxer of all time. Fun fact. Holm is currently the only fighter on the planet to win a boxing world title and a UFC title. Outstanding achievements in boxing coupled with dismantling MMA's most feared woman via head kick of all things is a testament to Holm's versatility and fight IQ. If there was more consistency in her record, she could have easily been top three in this list. Considering that she's only lost title fights, would it be fair to suggest that Holly is a gatekeeper in the women's bantamweight division? A new undisputed UFC bantamweight champion of the world, Holly! Number seven, Piotr Jan. In at number seven is a Siberian nightmare made of flesh. As a child, Piotr Jan would get into fights, causing his parents to move regularly. When his brother refused to take Jan to his boxing lessons, Jan snuck in anyway, and eight years later was a master of sport in boxing. Warm childhood memories aside, not much is known about Jan. He cites boxing as his foundation for MMA and with an impressive record of 17 and two, that's eight and one in the UFC. His style incorporates a tight guard and quick, precise footwork. His mode is calculating and methodical. With a moniker like No Mercy and his rapacious approach to giving his opponents any time or opening to operate with, expect anyone sharing the octagon with him to have a miserable night. Notable victories include Jose Aldo, Uriah Faber, John Dodson, and Jimmy Rivera. Oh, he got he hit an upper oh, 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 that was nasty. Oh, that was nasty. Number six, Nate Diaz. 
Representing the 209 at number six on this list is Nate Diaz. While not a renowned power puncher, Nate's boxing relies on relentless output which crumbles opponents. Shout out to Richard Perez Boxing for incorporating this effective style of boxing into both Diaz brothers. Heavy on the lead leg, marching forward, Diaz wears opponents down by keeping them on their back foot, swings wide hooks to the head and body at high volume to open up the opponent's guard, exposing the chin for a cracking one-two down the pipe. This exact method led Diaz to wins over former champions McGregor, Pettis, and Maynard, with the latter being KO of the night. Being a huge fan favorite, it's understandable some would want Nate higher up on the list. Unfortunately, the UFC is stacked with pugilists, and two of the spots ahead of Nate are taken by fighters who outboxed him or simply achieved more. Can you guess who they are? Stay tuned to find out if you were right as we break into our top five. Number five, Stipe Miocic. Kicking off the top five is none other than real life hero and all around good guy, Stipe Miocic. Balancing time between being a family man and a first responder, Miocic is also the consensus heavyweight GOAT. His kicking game may be non-existent, but Stipe is an NCAA Division I wrestler and Cleveland Golden Gloves boxing champion. With knockout power moving forward or backward, Stipe has ended the fight in decisive fashion against Junior Dos Santos, Fabrizio Verdun, Mark Hunt, Alastair Overeem, and Daniel Cormier, all of whom are heavyweight royalty. Miocic has an impressive fight IQ. After dropping the first two rounds to all-time great Daniel Cormier, Stipe made an adjustment and started digging to the body with heavy hooks and uppercuts. This dropped Cormier's guard and led to Miocic clocking Cormier with a straight right hand and finishing him with a flurry of punches. In a division where one punch can end it all, Stipe usually has the knack of being the man to land that punch. Oh, good right hand by Stipe. Arlovsky's hurt. Again, this could be it. Stipe Miocic. Number four, Conor McGregor. At number four is a man that needs no introduction. His notoriety has transcended MMA into a globally recognized brand. His star power and boxing capability was able to lure boxing kingpin Floyd Money Mayweather out of early retirement. Money and the Notorious delivered the largest combat sports spectacle of that year. In his debut, McGregor was able to play second in the all-time highest boxing pay-per-view events. This suggests enough people thought so highly of Conor's skill that on his debut, they backed him to beat one of the greatest boxers ever. Is that a fair representation of events? Even before the UFC, McGregor's record was littered with knockouts, punches habitually being his weapon of choice. After bullying the 145-pound division, the only man left was Jose Aldo, who hadn't lost in over a decade. McGregor would land a picture-perfect left cross from the southpaw stance, ending the fight in 13 seconds. McGregor was drilling this exact punch, moments before replicating the action to devastating effect in the octagon. He explained that mercilessly taunting Jose led to the champion becoming emotionally compromised. The counterpunch was planned in anticipation of Aldo acting on that overwhelming emotion. After avenging his loss to Diaz, McGregor displayed one of the finest championship performances ever, knocking Eddie Alvarez down with sniper-esque precision, a record-breaking five knockouts in a championship fight. Three of these were in the first five minutes with all knockdowns as a result of punches, the TKO coming off a countercross that became a four-punch combo. Now, Mark Over is the a top, looking to finish it here. Gregor, another first round win! Number three, Masvidal. Okay, yes, we know, he recently got absolutely trounced by Usman and it wasn't even close. But now that that's out the way, it's time to give the man his dues. Game Brand earned his stripes fighting in backyards on YouTube channels as far back as 16 years ago. He currently holds a record of 1-0 as a professional boxer. Masvidal does some of his best work as an underdog, eager to cancel the hype behind top prospect Darren Till. Masvidal utilized the blitz that began by negating Till's reach advantage and ended in a perfunctory left hook, sending the young star to the canvas in the second round. It took five seconds for Masvidal to silence the doubters in his next fight against Ben Askren. However, it was the three-round demolition of Nate Diaz that cemented Jorge as a certified star, winning the BMF belt in the process. 
Moments after the till KO, Masvidal cut number three welterweight Leon Edwards with a jab, cross, hook combo, dubbed the three-piece and the soda. Did you know that Masvidal's greatest inspiration comes from fellow Cuban and boxing legend Roberto Duran? Do you guys see any of Duran's influence in Masvidal? Number two, Max Holloway. Hawaiian sensation, Max Holloway truly has been blessed to have his striking skills he has displayed throughout his 24 UFC fights. Despite losing his debut at 19, Holloway would go on to win the belt in one of the best runs in the promotion's history. Though no longer champion, his consistency at the highest level and soaring fight IQ make it impossible to deny his claim to being among the elite. Max Holloway is a walking homage to the phrase, punches in bunches. He sits on the record for total strikes landed and significant strikes landed as of this video. In his last outing, he outstruck Calvin Cater by over 300 strikes and threw a total of 744 strikes. Rarely overextending, Holloway's secret to success is managing the distance, always in the right place, then firing back when the opening presents itself. He operates out of either stance with a probing lead hand to begin a flurry of combos. His antics inside the octagon have been prodigal. While dominating Brian Ortega, Holloway coached Ortega on how to block punches mid-fight. He would outstrike Ortega 290 to 110. To those who doubt the effectiveness of flow state, refer to round five of Holloway vs. Cater. Max addresses the commentary team at ringside face-on, declaring himself the best boxer in the UFC while slipping and countering as his opponent tries to land punch after punch on the elusive Hawaiian. Brr, goosebumps every time. Number one, Dustin Poirier. And now, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Number one, Dustin the Diamond Poirier has beaten two of the top five on this list and trains with another. Closing in on the most UFC wins record, Poirier has some incredible notches in his belt. Gaethje, Alvarez, twice. Hooker, Holloway, and McGregor, twice, for example. McGregor, who went 10 rounds with the greatest boxer of his generation, did not make it past two with Poirier. McGregor would suffer his first knockout loss courtesy of a right hook from Poirier. Despite giving a good account of himself, McGregor could not connect with anything decisive and Poirier's defense held up while McGregor exhausted his options. More on Poirier's defense shortly. In their trilogy fight, McGregor is forced to shoot for the clinch after Poirier connected with a hook cross combo that sent the Irishman stumbling backwards into dangerous territory for the remainder of the round. In the rematch with Holloway at 155, Poirier was able to disrupt Holloway's rhythm before it could get going. Max Holloway would state between rounds that his blocking is weird, which coming from an elite striker like Holloway indicates effectiveness from Poirier. From the southpaw stance, he employs a well-educated lead right hand, constantly pumping feints and measuring distance for the hard left cross hook. Dustin's defense is a modified Philly shell and incorporates a high cross guard, which opens up to a parrying guard for counter shots. His unorthodox method of closing distance, shifting stance with each punch, keeps his opponent at bay and opens up offensive options. As the man himself said, I did it punch by punch against the best in the world. It's hard to doubt him as he prepares for a title shot later this year against one of the UFC's most prolific finishers in Charles Oliveira. Well, all right, that brings us to the end of our video. Thank you very much if you stayed with us all this way. We really do hope you enjoyed it. So got a few questions. How did our list compare to yours? Which parts do you think we got wrong and who would you have placed on the list instead? Let us know in the comment section and do all that other great stuff. Like, subscribe, and let us know what you'd like to see next. Until next time.